All right, folks, let's go ahead and continue on. I want to get into more of our uh, DVM and kind of give you some tips along the way too and get a better understanding how to operate your DVM. And we'll get into some you know, good tips, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up again. I'm going to go ahead here, share it up. And we'll get it sliding across. There you go. All right. So let's talk about you know uses of the meter and how you can use them in a circuit that will help you uh, diagnose uh, some of your problems. And this meter is really good for uh, checking a voltage, amperage, and resistance. And like I said before, depending on how uh, what kind of meter you have and its capabilities, what you're going to be looking at. So, uh, you know, to, you know, you can measure uh, series circuits, uh, parallel circuits, uh, in, in different types. And we're going to just kind of start off with a, um, we're going to start off with a series circuit. So here's a good example right here. We're checking just for voltage and you can check voltage at different points of the circuit as you go along. So here my meter is, I'm just checking resistance on this bulb over here. It looks like a headlight bulb. And then we actually have the meter checking for voltage across the circuit here. And you can see the lead placement. Uh, you will really want to start off with mo most negative here. So this is kind of just checking the negative side. You can check both sides, really. So I can put my pause here and look at my negative on my battery. And then I can go down the line to see what I have along the way. So notice the negative is pretty much on the negative side. If you change around the opposite direction, what can happen is you, you'll get a, a reading in the negative. Um, so if you place it in the proper position, uh, position, you'll see that it's actually above. And how we check uh, on amperage, we have to let it go through the meter. So this is very important. If you well, and that's why I said you want to make sure you have a meter that it is capable of the amount of amperage you're going to be drawing. So if you get into things like um, going into starters and alternators, you're probably going to be above that 20 amp uh, range that you were on this particular meter uh, it has on it. Or you may have one that's only going up to 10 amps. And if you start using it for the higher amperage uh, circuit, you're going to damage the meter. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, and, you know, this is just a good way of opening up the circuit. So you notice the wires are not complete all the way around. And we know that if it's not a completed circuit, uh, it, 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 it won't work. Uh, but this is completing the circuit right here. And we're measuring how much amperage is flowing through. So how much little guys are going through there. And then basic, um, you know, checking voltage at points. This is a good point to actually get into testing to see if our uh, if, if if we have the right amount of voltage at that particular points that we need to have. So that is a you know, just kind of a brief over uh, overview of hooking it up. So uh, we can measure voltage, like I said before, in your red lead normally. And you can switch leads around it, you know, and, um, it, electrical doesn't know, you know, if it's black or red or whatever. Okay, so, but it's just, you know, it's, you know, I had a meter that actually had blue leads on it, but you, you can move it around if you want. But normally what we do is the hookup, you know, um, to uh, black on the common or the ground, and then we have red for whatever function we want to go. So, here is a good example right here. Here's my uh, multimeter. Uh, I have it in the voltage scale right here with my resistance scale. And here I can actually go through and I can actually check voltage. I can actually check voltage at uh, what is the available voltage. And I just, normally what I do, I start at the battery and I go from the battery, negative and uh, positive, negative and positive. And then I go through my different voltage you know, availability at the different parts. So this symbol here is an actual fuse. This symbol is a switch or a relay, you know, same thing. 
And then I have a resistor over here. So it just got cut off, but it actually goes around a little bit farther and it goes into a ground mode if this kind of got cut right here. So here I'm just checking my voltage after the switch. I can actually check <coughs> and my voltage drop. So I'm just checking to see how much voltage drops across the circuit. And this is a very important uh, you know, function of the meter. And uh, in, our you know, in our industry, uh, we do a lot of voltage drop. We want to make sure there's available voltage. If there's uh, an unspecified amount of voltage reflecting, uh, we'll start thinking it's probably uh, a resistance someplace. And that's where we have to isolate that too. So this is just showing a voltage drop in process. So uh, the amp meter, <coughs> like I said before, it actually uh, functions. Uh, you have to move the lead over. This doesn't show it, but you would move it over to what you have, what you're trying to test. Okay, so it could be a higher amperage or a very low amperage uh, that you're checking for. Again, this particular meter, unless you do an inductive, inductive uh, pickup, you're going to have to move the lead over. Okay, from here over to whichever one you want for your actually checking current flow. So some of them, uh, like I said before, have a maximum of 10 amps. Some of them have a maximum of 20 amps. You don't want to ex ex exceed that. Now, if you want to have a meter that can actually check, check without moving, opening up the circuit, which is preferable because uh, with uh, any time you disconnect, uh, I, the, like the battery, and you say we take the negative lead off the battery, now we put it back on, then it actually, a lot of things come alive. Uh, computers will start talking, and you may have a higher than what you anticipated uh, amperage draw for a certain amount of time, and then the uh, battery, uh, the the actual computers goes to sleep after a period of time. So this is something you need to take in consideration when you're buying some of your equipment too. One of the great things is an actual uh, lead that you can, uh, an addition, uh, some don't come with it, but this actually has an inductive pickup. And this inductive pickup, all you have to do is put it around a wire. And some of these will come with different size connections too. Uh, you can go to different places and buy an inductive uh, pickup that actually has everything involved in it. You can actually do voltage and everything. It'll have some connections right on here. This is a fluke add-on uh, to this particular meter here, which really, um, it, the way it actually works is acts, anytime you put a voltage through a wire, you have that voltage you know, going through that whole circuit it actually sends off a little bit of a magnetic field. And depending on how much um, amperage is going through that is how much intensity of that magnet, magnetic field is. And this is how this works. And it actually pushes it off or brings it into the meter saying, this is how much. And some meters do it for, by saying it's, you know, they convert it to voltage. Um, you know, some meters actually do show up as an amperage. So you, you've got to know your meter again, okay? So this is really, really important. And the next thing we can do with the meter is checking resistance, which is, you know, a lot of times that's what we're doing on you know, motors, bulbs, uh, anything that is doing work for us. Now, one of the things I want to make sure you understand on this particular function you don't want that circuit alive. You want to have the battery disconnected or the switch off. If you have the circuit live, you will damage your meter, okay? I just want to make that clear. This is where you know, the others, you know, checking voltage and amperage, you want it to be alive in most cases. Uh, but on your Resistance testing, you don't want it live. You want that switch off or you want the battery disconnected. Because if you have or have that component out of the circuit, you can check your component with the, you know, 
with the you know the motor out and check the connections that way and see the resistance or if you want to get a total resistance of the circuit that's when you got to disconnect the battery uh, if you don't you can damage your meter i just want to make that clear all right so that was pretty much a basics of how to use a meter. There's more things to do it, and depending on what meter you get, is how much um, you. <laughs> let's put it this way: how much uh, capability of that meter is. You could make sure that you have a lot of great features on a lot of the meters. Um, I tend to want to keep things kind of basic. I buy a meter that does. Uh, voltage, resistance, and also lower amperage, and have something uh, different for some of the other functions. Because I, if, if that meter goes down for whatever reason, I can't do these other tests too. So that's just me. Uh, you do, but a lot of meters do a lot of great things. So keep that in mind when you're buying a meter. And hopefully this was beneficial. And we'll get into the lab. We'll do some testing as we go along. All right. We're going to stop this for now, and I'm going to stop this too.